And so now I'd like to invite uh, Nadine Hammond <laughs> from the West Perry Sound District Museum, also known as the Museum on Tower Hill. Hi. So I'm from Perry Sound uh, District Museum, I, or the West Perry Sound District Museum, also the Museum on Tower Hill. Uh, and I am working with our volunteer uh, volunteer uh, collections. Doesn't, she doesn't have an official title, but volunteers collections. Um, Mary Ann Bourgeois, pardon? Angel. Angel. Yes, that is, that's another good term for her. <laughs> so this is me and Mary Ann, and we've uh, started getting some additional key members uh, for our team, which is Anne Bossart, who is one of our board members. Uh, we just got started a new NOHFC student or intern who will be helping with this project. And uh, Paige Phillips is a part-time staff member and, of course, family members, which would be my mother. <laughs> uh, so over the past three years, the museum has been creating and updating uh, crucial documents, so policies and procedures. Um, our five-year plan has indicated that we need to focus on our collection storage. Up until this time, we've been focusing on our building. So I've kind of ignored our building issues because for me, those are a separate plan and I've got a relatively healthy budget to deal with some of our deficiencies. Um, so some of the... Uh, key areas that we've identified is we need to improve our past perfect data entries. Um, as other people have said, they're insufficient to find anything. Most of ours are an accession number, an object name, and maybe a brief description. Um, we've been updating our security system. We have installed a new HVAC system, and I can't quite see what else we've done there. Um, oh, creation, we need, what we need to do is create uh, written procedures. We, any written procedures we have, they're so outdated that they're essentially useless. Um, so the museum employs myself and Paige Phillips, who can be seen here. She was a former NOHFC intern and has since stayed on at 10 hours a week. Uh, our museum is owned, the building itself is owned by the board of directors. And we're located on a heritage garden property which is owned and operated by the town. Uh, we have, on the property is a heritage building. That, who is maintaining that building is kind of up in flux. Right now it's the town of Perry Sound and there's discussion that it might be inherited by the museum. The observation tower is operated by the town. Uh, so this is a, to give you an idea of what our f uh, building looks like. We're built into a hill, so you enter into the top of the top floor of the building, and we have our main exhibit room, our lion's room, which is another exhibit space, also rental space, and our office space. Uh, to give you an idea of what our display sp spaces look like, the E. Roy Smith Gallery is our main gallery, and that can be seen on the far side. And then our founder's room is located downstairs, and the lion's room is upstairs. And this is downstairs where our collection storage is. So the founder's room was renovated shortly after they built the building to become display space, thus taking away from our storage space. Uh, there's an artist room which, since I've been there, has seen five different purposes. I was not quite sure what it's doing. We have a loading dock. Our collections room holds mostly collection items. However, it does hold a few display items and other miscellaneous items. The lab was originally meant to work with the collections since when I came in it was storage. What we want to do at the end of this process is have collections and archive storage in the collections room, have non-collection storage in our artist room, and turn our lab, not into research, but I couldn't fit the working with the artifacts room onto that space. So our collection, it has over 13,000 items. Uh, objects includes archives, photos, textiles, um, highlights from the collection, anything that we would save if there was a fire would be our quill box collection. We have quite an extensive selection of quill boxes. Dave Thomas, who is a local historian, he had a very extensive, over 8,000 photographs and slides of our area. Land registry journals from the West Perry Sound District, as well as the recent acquired, we recently acquired 140 years worth of North Star papers. So this is our, what our storage room looks like right now. 
Um, artifacts are displayed on shelves, they're not boxed. You can see that there's a lot of wasted space vertically. Um, we have an issue with frames are rubbing against each other, but you can't see them because our papers are in front of them. Uh, we have some display, you can see our display items are also located in the storage room and what you can't see is just beyond the land registry books. It's a Tetris sort of large object storage that I've never been able to get back into. So Marianne did the condition report in our collection storage and we determined that we have 30% floor occupation and that's just our furniture that's not including the collections, which is why it seems off to us. But we're quite empty in that room in terms of furniture. We have a 70% unit fullness, a 78% room height usage, and a 66 overall fullness. And 66% of the objects can be re retrieved within three minutes, but we should note that that's retrieved in three minutes by Mary Ann. Anybody else, we're not quite sure. That could probably be using a calendar instead of a stopwatch. And in terms of accessioned, we believe we have 98% of our collection accessioned. However, we're not sure how much is inventoried because only last week I found a couple files full of uh, donation forms. So we, we really need to inventory what is down in that room. So our main issues, uh, oversized storage. You can see what I was talking about, the Tetris style. We have to climb over objects. Most of the objects in the back are actually on platforms, which are on wheels. Uh, but anything in front of it, we have to lift up and move. As well as a poor data entry into the collections database, resulting in many of these items don't have descriptions. So when you go down to look for something, not entirely sure what you're looking for sometimes. Um, so what we want to address, we want to get uh, proper packing material to protect our large framed objects which are currently being hidden by our North Star papers. We want to put our North Star papers, as you can see more of them here, into proper boxes and get them onto proper shelves as the shelves are not fixed and thus health and safety issue in terms of somebody might be crushed. Small objects, uh, not stored in boxes but laid out on shelves, taking up a lot of valuable uh, space, as well as just proper to protect everything in our collections. So our management issues was the second pro uh, priority that we wanted to address because we have a lack of clear written procedures for incoming artifacts, lack of clear direction for collecting, hence we have about 30 irons and we don't know what our gaps in our collections are, we don't know how many more of one object we need and we want to really identify that so we have a strong collection mandate. As well as Poor existing procedures are exasperated by a lack of temporary storage or workspace for documenting incoming objects. Ultimately, we found that our poor written procedures have led to poor documentation practices. So urgent priorities that we want to take care of is the poor, we want to write our procedures so that we're not, exasper we're not fixing a problem only to carry on doing what we were doing poorly before. And we need to address uh, we need to write our policies and come up with a defined location to work with the artifacts that come in and within the building, as it says here, assign temporary storage within the building so we know where to go to find these temporary artifacts. Thank you.